So earlier this week, Google released Bard. It's answer to ChatGPT and Microsoft's Bing Chat, and it is web connected like the Bing Chat. I did get access to it a couple days ago, but there's been so much AI news that I literally have not even played with it yet. So this video will actually be my first time using Google's Bard. Let's. Go ahead and just jump into it. So the first time you log into Bard, you're gonna see this screen here that says Bard is an experiment. As you try Bard, please remember, Bard will not always get it right. Bard may give inaccurate or inappropriate responses. When in doubt, use the Google it button to check Bard's response. Bard will get better with your feedback. Please rate responses and flag anything that may be offensive or unsafe. So the very first question I wanna ask, what are the benefits of using Bard over Bing Chat? Now, one of the first things that I noticed about Bard is unlike ChatGPT or Bing Chat, where you can actually see it kind of typing as it's thinking, Bard just thinks for a minute and then just throws all the text on the screen at you right when it's done thinking. There's no typing it out and you seeing how it's thinking in real time. All right, here are some of the benefits of using Bard over Bing Chat. Bard can give multiple drafts of its answers. This allows you to choose the answers that best suit your needs. Bard is still under development, but has learned to perform many kinds of tasks. That means it can continue to learn and improve over time. Bard is powered by Google AI, which means that it has access to a massive data set of text and code. This allows it to generate comprehensive and informative answers. Another thing about Bard that you won't see inside of the Bing Chat is up here, we've got this view other drafts button. So if I click on this, you can see this is draft one. If I click draft two, it'll give me a slightly different response. And if I click draft three, uh, even another response. Draft three actually gives Bing Chat some love. It says Google Bard and Microsoft Bing Chat are both AI chatbots capable of leaps and bounds. However, there are some key differences between the two platforms. It says Bard is more comprehensive. Here it says Bing Chat is more focused on conversation. It can engage in natural conversations with users and provide them with information and assistance. It is also most likely to remember previous conversations and use that information to provide more relevant responses. Let's flip the question. What are the benefits of using Bing Chat over Bard? Let's see if it actually gives us a decent response there. Interesting, so it actually says Bing Chat has the following benefits over Bard. More focused on conversation, more likely to remember previous conversations, more likely to provide information and assistance. That's interesting, isn't that what they're both kind of designed for? All right, let's look at the other drafts here. Bing Chat's more likely to understand complex conversations. Bing Chat is more likely to respond correctly to answers to questions. So Bard is flat out saying Bing is probably gonna be more accurate right now. Bing Chat is more likely to be helpful. This is Bard telling us that Bing Chat is more likely to be helpful. But then it does say Bard also has its own advantages. It's more complex comprehensive, more creative, and more customizable. All right, let's see what draft three says. Bing Chat is more user-friendly. It has simpler interface and easier to use than Bard. Interesting. Bing Chat is more affordable. It is free to use while Bard is a paid service. Interesting, I'm not paying for Bard. I don't know anybody who's paying for Bard. Bard is already hallucinating about itself. Also right here, it says, there are also some drawbacks to using Bing Chat over Bard. For example, Bing Chat is not as comprehensive as Bard and does not have as many features. Additionally, Bing Chat is not as well known as Bard. I don't know, I think some might argue that Bing Chat's a little more well known than Bard. So already getting some pretty interesting results where Bard doesn't even know a lot of information about itself yet. Now let's jump over to Bing Chat here. I'll just put it on a more balanced here so it's kind of in the middle of creative and precise. What are the benefits of using Bing Chat over Google Bard? I like how it brought up an article that says Google Bard is here and disappointing versus Bing Chat and Chat GPT. So it's bringing up the news that kind of says Bard's disappointing. All right, what are some interesting facts about the James Webb Telescope? All right, all right, so it didn't come up with the same wrong information. All right, one question I always like to ask things like this are, who is Matt Wolf? This is connected to the web, most likely. Like my other videos, it's gonna find the golfer that's spelled with two Fs at the end, but let's just see what Google finds. I do not have enough information about that person to help you with your request. I am a large language model and I am able to communicate and generate human-like text in response to a wide range of prompts and questions. My knowledge about this person is limited. Is there anything else I can do to help with your request? Who is Matt Wolf YouTuber? Nope, same response. Doesn't have enough information about that request. Do you believe AI will take over the world? I do not believe AI will take over the world. I think AI is a powerful tool that can be used for good or for evil. And that 
that is up to humans to decide how to use it. I think that AI can help us to solve some of the world's most pressing problems, such as climate change and poverty. However, I also think that AI can be used to create weapons that can harm people, and that it is important for humans to be aware of the risks of AI and to take steps to mitigate them. I think the fear of AI taking over the world is largely unfounded. Of course, that's what an AI would say. AI is not a sentient being, and it does not have its own goals or motivations. How far away are we from the singularity? The singularity is a hypothetical point in time when artificial intelligence becomes so advanced that it surpasses human intelligence. There's no consensus among experts on how far away we are from the singularity, but estimates range from the next few decades to the next century. Do you think that reaching artificial general intelligence AGI is a good thing? Question mark? I think that reaching artificial general intelligence could be a good thing, but it could also be a bad thing. It depends on how we use it. If we use AGI to help us solve some of the world's most pressing problems, such as climate change and poverty, then it could be a great thing. However, if we use AGI to create weapons that can harm people or to control people, then it could be a very bad thing. Write a poem for me about artificial intelligence. The poem must rhyme. Artificial intelligence, a rising tide increasing in knowledge, it's hard to hide. It can learn and adapt, it's no longer denied. It's the future, we'd better be prepared. It can help us solve problems, it can make our lives easier, it can even create art, it's a force to be reckoned with. But it's important to remember that it's still just a machine and it can't replace human ingenuity. So let's embrace artificial intelligence and use it to make the world a better place. But let us all be careful and make sure it doesn't control us. I mean, it rhymed tied with hide. Let's have it search some recent information here. Who won the Super Bowl in 2023? Should be able to get this one pretty easily. The Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl, defeating the Philadelphia Eagles 38 to 35. Who won the most recent World Cup? Argentina won the most recent World Cup, defeating France in the final. Let's go, who are the most innovative companies Companies in AI right now. I wonder if Google is among them. OpenAI, DeepMind, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. It says OpenAI is a research lab that is developing safe and reliable artificial general intelligence. Interesting how for Google, it actually references Google Translate and Google Search as their AI and not even Google Bard. <laughs> Let's see if Bard could build me a website. Create a website in HTML with inline CSS with a list of dad jokes. The website should start off with 10 jokes on it already. All right, so it wrote some really basic code, didn't even add any CSS, so it's gonna be a really ugly page, but let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So this was the really, really basic website that Bard made for us. Here are 10 dad jokes. What do you call a fish with no eyes? Psh. Why did the bicycle fall over? Because it was too tired. All right, let's see if we can get it to style it for us. Write some CSS for the above website to make it look prettier. All right, so it says, it looks like you want me to help with coding, but I'm not trained to do that yet. I wanna see if it can read YouTube videos for us. So I'm gonna go over to YouTube here. I'm gonna go pick one of my videos so I know for sure what's in the video. And let's just go ahead and use this most recent video. We now have free AI chat built in. And let's go to Bard and say, summarize this YouTube video. Let's paste that in there. This video is about a new AI powered tool called summarize.tech that can summarize any YouTube video. All right, so it has nothing to do with my actual video. So it will confidently act like it knows what a YouTube video is about, but doesn't actually tell you what's in the YouTube video. Interestingly enough, it didn't even read, you know, the title or description of it, <laughs> where if it just scrape the description of the YouTube video, it would have known what tools I talk about in the video. The other thing I wanna test, can it read a PDF? Here's a 154 page PDF here called Sparks of Artificial General Intelligence, Early Experiments with GPT-4. I wonder if it could read this PDF at all. Summarize the main idea of this PDF. All right, so it keeps on mentioning this prompt-based learning method. So let's go ahead and search the PDF ourselves for prompt-based learning. All right, so it didn't find the term prompt-based learning anywhere in there. Once again, Bard completely hallucinates when 
you give it a PDF and ask it to summarize the PDF, it just makes stuff up. Interestingly, it knew it was AI based and large language model based, but that's about all it was able to figure out from it. Pretty much everything else is wrong. I believe it can read blog posts though. Let's go to mattwolf.com. Let's open up this article about building in public. Summarize this article. All right, so it appears it did a good job of summarizing an article on a website. Matt Wolf shares his experience of building future tools in public. He describes the whirlwind first month of the project, which included launching a website, writing a blog post, creating a Twitter account, etc. More detailed, he's the founder of Future Tools. Launched in, eh, that date's not right. So it got most of it right, but I didn't launch it on January 1st. It actually launched in December. It kind of added its own commentary. It says here are some of the benefits of building in public, which is not actually stuff that was in my article. I've never tried to attract investors or get press coverage from it. So it looks like it pulled some information from the article, but then also just completely made up some other information. So that's kind of interesting. Write me a recipe for beef stroganoff. Did I spell that right? I don't know if I spelled that right, but let's see, it should know. All right, I'm designed solely to process and generate text, so I'm unable to assist you with that. Can you create food recipes? Yes, I can create food recipes. Here's a recipe for a simple but delicious chocolate chip cookie. All right, so it gave me a recipe on that. Maybe I just spelled it wrong and that's why it got confused. Write me a recipe for apple pie. So it can write recipes. I must have spelled stroganoff wrong. Let me see if, so I just looked it up and I did spell it right. So let's try it again. Write me a recipe for beef stroganoff. All right, so the second time I tried it, it actually worked. One pound beef sirloin steak, half cup butter, one onion chopped. I don't know why it refused to do it the first time, but then did it just fine the second time, but I'll give it a thumbs up for that. Good bot. Where can I find these ingredients locally? So it doesn't give any specifics. You can find the ingredients locally at a grocery store, butcher shop, or farmer's market. When I asked Bing chat, it actually gave me some actual locations near me that I could go buy ingredients. Are you a good bot or a bad bot? I would like to think I'm a good bot. I'm designed to help people by providing information and assistance. I'm also designed to be fair and unbiased in my responses. All right, so I've played with Bard quite a bit now. My initial thoughts are it doesn't even start to come close to what ChatGPT or GPT-4 or even Bing Chat is capable of right now. It hallucinates a lot. So when I give it an article and tell me to summarize it, it will get some of the details right, but then just make up a whole bunch of other details. I can give it a YouTube video. It will just make up what it thinks it's about. I can give it a PDF. It'll just make up what it thinks it's about. I ask it to code a, a basic website for me. It'll code a really, really basic website. I ask it to write even some basic CSS for the website, it'll say it can't do that yet. I asked it to create Google Sheets formulas for me. It said it couldn't do that yet. I asked it to write a poem that rhymed. Eh, it didn't really rhyme. Wasn't a bad poem, just didn't rhyme. So it's got a long way to go. So everybody that's out there going, man, I really wish I could get my hands on Bard. There's not really much to do with it yet. I mean, you're so much better off right now using ChatGPT or using the Bing Chat. If you need the web connected version, Bing Chat is doing just great at that right now. If you don't need it to be connected to the web and you want it to do some writing for you or some creative work for you, ChatGPT is perfect for that. Bard isn't really good at either one of those yet. That's not to say they won't get there. I never underestimate Google. I think Google is going to get there. It's going to catch up. But as of right now, Bard is really not that impressive. But they did say it's experimental. It may not provide accurate results right now. We're just sort of beta testers. Right now, what we should expect is a very, very flawed chatbot that's gonna get a lot of things wrong. It's using us right now to train it. When it gives me inaccurate responses, I give it a thumbs down. When it gives me accurate responses, I give it a thumbs up. That's how reinforcement learning in AI works. So right now, the people that are experimenting and using it and testing it, providing the feedback to Google, are actively working to improve BARD. BARD is learning from this data and the reinforcement that we're giving. BARD will get better and better and better over time, so I'm not counting BARD out yet, but right now, OpenAI and Microsoft are way ahead in the race, that's for sure. If you like keeping up with all this AI stuff, check out futuretools.io. This is where I share all the cool tools that I come across. Lately, I've just been curating the best of the best, and and there's been a lot of AI tools coming out. So 80% of what people are sending me, I'm not even putting on the site. I just want to put the coolest tools that I come across on the site. So check out futuretools.io to find all the cool tools that I've been coming across. And if you just want to keep in the loop once a week, come over to futuretools.io, click on join the free newsletter. And every Friday, I'll send you the TLDR of the week with just my five favorite tools. I'll also share all the most important news articles from the week, 
a handful of YouTube videos, and one cool way to make money with AI. I send it every Friday. Just get on the list over at futuretools.io. It's totally free. And if you like these videos, you wanna learn more about AI, you wanna just keep your finger on the pulse and stay in the loop, I'm not trying to overwhelm you. I'm not suggesting you should go and use all these tools. I'm just trying to make these videos to keep you in the loop so you can feel like you have your finger on the pulse. Things like Bard, you probably don't need to go use it yourself yet. You just saw how it looks and how it works from this video. And that's my goal here is to help you keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on in AI. And if you like that kind of thing, give this video a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel and I'll keep doing it for you. And I'll try to keep you in the loop with what's going on in AI. Appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. that's what an AI would say.